The Premier, Gladys Berejiklian, has delivered explosive evidence to the Independent Commission Against Corruption. She's admitted to having been in a close personal relationship with the former MP Daryl Maguire. He's being investigated by the corruption watchdog over property deals. Gladys Berejiklian says she stuffed up in her personal life. She's human and she was let down by someone she trusted. The opposition says the Premier is reckless, a fraud and should resign. Let's bring in state political reporter Ashley Rapin out Macquarie Street. Ashley, Gladys Berejiklian went straight from that grilling at ICAC to an absolute barrage of questions from reporters. How did she handle it? Juanita, the Premier was extremely stoic and quite open and honest on what has been an undoubtedly mortifying day for Gladys Berejiklian. She insists that while she made a bad choice in her personal life, that she has done nothing wrong and she will not be resigning. No one quite knew what to expect from Gladys Berejiklian's appearance at the ICAC, but it certainly wasn't this. Was it right that at least as at the 13th of July 2018, you were in a close personal relationship with Mr That's Maguire? Correct. Is it right to say that, that you were in a close personal relationship with Mr Maguire from at least about the time of the 2015 election? Or, or slightly after, thereabouts. And it was a tightly held secret, even among her colleagues. I'm a very private person and I didn't feel the relationship had sufficient substance for it to be made public. The Premier says she never referred to the former Wagga Wagga MP as her partner, but a tapped phone conversation between the pair exposed the depth of their relationship. She called him her number one. What did you mean by him always being your numero uno? I think he, I, I think what I would have meant that there is um, that in my personal life I placed importance on, on how I felt about him. Darren Maguire was forced to resign in 2018 after appearing before another ICAC inquiry, which put him under a corruption cloud. When you asked for his resignation, Ms Berejiklian, was that because you'd formed a view based on that evidence that um, Mr Maguire had um, misused his position as a parliamentarian? Well, it was based on uh, primarily the fact that it was obvious that he was now the subject of an investigation by this body and had questions to answer. Despite this, their relationship continued. When uh, did you cease to be in a close personal relationship with Mr Maguire? Well, obviously, um, uh, a few months ago when uh, I was asked to support this inquiry, it became apparent to me that I should have uh, absolutely no contact anymore with that individual and I ceased all contact. After five years, it was over, but the Premier insists it never had any bearing on her job. I would uh, always uh, make that distinction between what I do in my private or personal life. And as part of that, did you seek to limit the information that Mr Maguire was giving you regarding his outside business interests because you were concerned that if you found out too much, you might be put in a position where you, in the exercise of your public duties, might have to do something about it? No. A taped phone conversation, though, did call that into question. William tells me we've done our deal. <laughs> So hopefully that's about half of all that gone now. That's good. Mm. I don't need to know about that bit. No, you don't. Why are you saying to Mr Maguire, I don't need to know about that bit? Um, at the, because I would have assumed, again, I have no direct recollection, I can only surmise, but I, I probably would have uh, firstly um, not regarded as, uh, as interesting to me. In hindsight, Gladys Berejiklian now says she has serious doubts about Mr Maguire's honesty overall. I don't know if anything he said to me was truthful. As the Premier was under pressure in the inquiry, speculation was mounting outside. Well, I think that the news uh, came uh, today, which was a surprise to many people, uh, that has been revealed today. Look, I, I have no knowledge of these matters. It's a matter that's before that commission. It's a matter uh, for the New South Wales government. I have worked uh, well with the New South Wales Premier uh, over, over many years, and, uh, but that is a matter for, for her. It rots from the top because she knows what she's been involved in. She's a fraud. She's an absolute fraud. That just shows a recklessness. Gladys Berejiklian has no choice but to resign. The Premier returned to Parliament, adamant she's done nothing wrong. I'm human and I stuffed up in my personal life. I will call it a personal nightmare. I assumed he was doing the right thing. I had my trust in him and obviously I know now that that trust was misplaced. Hands down, this has been one of the most difficult days of my life. 
Darren Maguire will front the inquiry on Wednesday and the Premier may have to reappear after he gives evidence. We asked voters what they thought about today's stunning revelations and the reaction of this news. Well, I think that having a close personal relationship as a politician is actually one of the prerequisites for being a politician. Couldn't happen to a nicer person. I think um, this issue of what happens in people's private lives is essentially a very private matter. I think that reputation is everything in leadership, right? And so given that it's a party decision, there'd be other people that would be willing to step up. Sounds like a conflict of interest. Without question, her image and her judgment has been dampened and we don't know um, what else is sort of going on there as well. I think that it's a concern and I think um, she should be accountable for her actions. No comment. She's entitled to her life. So, Ashley, can Gladys Berejiklian survive this controversy? Well, that's the question, and it's unclear. Right now, her senior ministers are publicly showing their support for her, but that's what you'd expect. There are some within the party who have been waiting for a moment like this, and they will try to capitalise on it and end Gladys Berejiklian's leadership. Her allies are hopeful that her standing and reputation and popularity in the community will save her, and that her record on managing the pandemic and the bushfires is enough. But this still has a way to play out and it will play out very publicly at the inquiry this week, especially when Daryl Maguire takes the stand. Melinda Hayter now takes a look at the former Wagga Wagga MP and his business dealings that are under investigation. This isn't Daryl Maguire's first time in the spotlight. In 1999, he was elected to parliament. Then in 2015, he entered into a secret relationship with Gladys Berejiklian. In 2017, he was allegedly set to make a significant amount of money at Badgerys Creek, where Sydney's second airport will be built. In 2018, an ICAC inquiry examining the former Canterbury City Council revealed Daryl Maguire was involved in suspicious business deals. In July that year, he left the Liberal Party. Weeks later, he was forced to resign as an MP, but his relationship with the Premier continued. Now, two years later, he's again facing the ICAC, but this time the focus is entirely on him. After revealing the relationship, Gladys Berejiklian said evidence about an alleged cash for visas scheme had blindsided her. I can't tell you what I felt when I learned of those on the public record. Shocked might be an appropriate word. Beyond shocked. Disgusted. Shocked, disgusted, let down, all of, all of the above. The Premier also claimed she had no recollection of some phone calls played to her today. In one conversation, Mr Maguire could be heard discussing a trip to China to scare a communist-owned company into helping save an agricultural business in the Riverina. I may even pack my bag in the next few days and scrove them myself see if I can sort them out. It's because they listen to government MPs. Anyway, I'll, I'll let you know what happens. Do you recall that particular conversation, 24 August 2017? I don't specifically recall it, but obviously it's, it's, that's my voice and his voice, yep. Ms Berejiklian also said she did not always take Mr Maguire's business proposals seriously. She maintains his plans to make more than a million dollars of a Badgerys Creek land deal didn't raise concerns for her. I wouldn't have um, expressed a concern or, or uh, registered a concern at that stage, and again, I don't have a specific recollection, it was because he was always talking big about deals and they always seemed to fall through. The Premier conceded she did make a mistake, but only on a personal level. She maintained she would have reported Mr Maguire if she thought something was off. But if the ICAC aren't satisfied with her position, it could refer the matter to prosecutors. Melinda Hayter, ABC News, Wagga Wagga. Ashley, if the Premier does end up resigning, who are the likely candidates in the Liberal Party to take over? The Treasurer Dominic Perrottet has always been the heir apparent, but he's recently been embroiled in the eye care scandal, which may hurt his chances. The Planning Minister, Rob Stokes, is considered a safe pair of hands, but there's also other names that are viable contenders, Stuart Ayres, Matt Keane and Mark Speakman. Juanita, though, the leadership of the Liberal Party doesn't seem to be at that crisis point yet. It will be a very interesting week, though, here on Macquarie Street. Ashley Raper on a remarkable day in state politics.